just to keep things interesting, I'm starting off this video with a challenge, which I think basically sums up the entire argument that I'm going to be making in the rest of the video. I challenge anyone to propose a superior solution to our energy needs that fulfill the following post-production criteria. Does not require fuel, does not require complex infrastructure, does not degrade or impose on the ecosystem, does provide abundant electrical energy, does provide energy on demand, can be scaled from nano to planetary. Wind, wave, and hydropower generation are all derivatives of solar activity, all of which are inherently problematic because they degrade essential functions of the ecosystem. Turbines, floating arrays, and dams all pose significant environmental hazards and undermine the immediate ecology. They are also absurdly expensive to install and maintain, and are susceptible to a variety of natural disasters. Additionally, on a purely energy-centric scale, these methods of power generation draw energy out of the environment, weakening and interfering with key ecological processes. This leaves three mainstream alternatives, bio, geothermal, and solar. Both bio and geothermal are problematic for the same reasons that were just addressed, although biomass and biofuels are probably the most impractical of the three because they generate excessive waste and rely on the highly inefficient process of combustion and heat to generate electricity. Geothermal seems like an ideal source of energy, but it has one glaring flaw. It sucks energy from the planet's core. Short term this is practical, but long term it is problematic because the temperature of the planet plays a key role in climate stability and ecosystem functionality. If all our energy needs were drawn from this source, it would be a relatively short time before the transfer of energy had negative effects on the surface of the planet. This leaves the last remaining option of solar power, which clearly, after very little analysis, is without a doubt vastly superior to all other sources of available energy. First, it is a passive energy source. Converting sunlight to electrical energy does not have any effect on the sun. The process is entirely incidental from the perspective of the power source. Second, the sun is expected to continue to produce a steady supply of energy for at least 5 billion years. Additionally, our existence is dependent on the sun. Therefore, even if it burns out, we will no longer require energy. <coughs> Third, and this is somewhat speculative, assuming that our species ever attempts long-distance space travel, solar power will play a key role in supplying our energy needs in space. Fourth, 800 terawatts of solar energy are absorbed by the Earth every year. This is over 50 times the amount we consume annually. Even under today's insanely greedy and unsustainable consumption patterns, it is highly unlikely that there are, are enough natural resources on Earth to even build enough infrastructure to consume 800 terawatts of power per year. Fifth, the number one concern of all solar power skeptics is that a prolific distributed solar power network might just like the other renewable resources listed alter the climate and therefore the ecology this is a problem that can very easily be solved with good design the reason for this is that 800 terawatts of solar energy is already being absorbed by the planet as long as our solar collection mechanisms do not reflect a significant amount of that energy there is virtually no limit to the amount we can convert into other forms, as long as it, is, as it is released locally with approximately the same distribution. The number two concern of solar skeptics is twofold. First, it involves the low efficiency of current solar technology, and second, it involves the necessity of an energy storage medium during nighttime. Both problems are addressed by the same solution and are being solved at this very moment at various locations around the world. The answer is of course multispectral solar power, which essentially means that the solar energy collector is capable of absorbing 
a broad range of electromagnetic energy and co converting it all at a very high efficiency into electricity. What this means is that solar collectors using this technology can generate power at all times, even in the middle of the night, thus eliminating the need for energy storage devices. Additionally, due to the precision engineering of these collectors and the diverse spectrum of energy they are able to absorb, if the efficiency goes up dramatically. For example, I'm sure that everyone is familiar with LED technology. This technology has become so refined that there are LED devices capable of turning one electron into one photon. That is 100% efficiency. In the near future, we will have solar technology capable of converting one photon into one electron. But not only that, infrared, ultraviolet, and other forms of radiation emitted by the sun will also be converted into electrons at a similarly high efficiency. Ultimately, the result of all this is a true revolution in power and energy independence. With distributed multispectral solar power, the necessity of a global electric grid quickly disappears. Across the scale from micro to small mobile devices, to large appliances, even houses and massive buildings, virtually all modular units will be able to generate their own power on demand, including vehicles, aircraft, ships, and spacecraft. Imagine never having to plug anything in ever again. Imagine a total elimination of all external wires and wiring. I classify this projected technological advancement as a perfect example of design inevitability. The only way it won't happen is if people actively choose to prevent it or otherwise attempt inferior alternatives that collectively deplete the resources necessary to kickstart this paradigm shift. Statistically, this is the only renewable energy progression that makes long-term sense. My recommendation is that at least 90% of our energy-related strategic research and development resources should be reallocated to exploring this most promising alternative. Given that the groundwork for this technology already exists and has been proven economical, it's not even a risky proposition. Arguably, it won't solve all of the world's problems. However, it will, at the very least, eliminate one more variable that holds us back and threatens our continuation. I've always had a ludite streak, but I'm willing to give technology the benefit of the doubt. And once again, the challenge that started off this video. I challenge anyone to propose a superior solution to our energy needs that fulfill the following post-production criteria. Does not require fuel. Does not require complex infrastructure. Does not degrade or impose on the ecosystem. Provides abundant electrical energy. Provides energy on demand. Can be scaled from nano to planetary. And that's it. Thanks for watching.